Welcome to Math with Marty. We're back again, and it's the start of the summer schedule here at VPW, which means it's the beginning of our second year on the air, bringing mathematics and country music to the people of Winnipeg. And for the first time regularly, we're going to be seen on the east side of the river as well as the west, and our time slot is Tuesday nights at 10.30. Uh, we have a, a guest on uh, tonight from, uh, he's a fellow student of mine from uh, down in the uh, university. We took some courses together. Well, I'm, I'm not a full-time student uh, any longer. It's quite a few years since I graduated from engineering. But Richard's still going at it, trying to get his PhD in, uh, what is it, Richard? Physics. No. Physics, yeah, I knew that. Yeah. Um, There's been a few changes along the way. Yeah, where did you start out? In electrical engineering. And uh, what was your uh, motivation for getting in electrical? Did you go right from high school? Yeah, right from high school. I guess it was sort of a family. You know, my you know, grandfather was an electrical engineer, my father was an electrical engineer, so it was a natural way that's, to go. That's unbelievable. <laughs> and then uh, I, it, uh, I thought you were like a farm boy. Oh, no. No, no, not at all. I've what, been in uh, the city all the time. What high school did you go to? Uh, that, that no-name one. Uh, Bruns. No-name uh, high school? J.H. Bruns, the one you didn't have. Oh, the one I've never heard never of. That's heard right. Of okay, has anybody in our viewing audience heard of J.H. Bruns High School? Yeah, this, this question has come up before. <laughs> to me, I, like, uh, do they have a football team? Uh, do they reach for the top? <laughs> Never heard of him. J.H. Bruns. Unbelievable. Somewhere, <laughs> somewhere in the city of Winnipeg, there's a school I've never heard of. I guess nobody's heard of it, but uh, some people are saying, but I, I go there. Richard went there. I don't know if it's renowned for anything. Okay. Uh, well, you're... Apparently not. Now that you've made it to the big time, it's famous for the, a guy who's actually made it to math with Marty from John M. Bruns High School. <laughs> That's right. Okay. J.H. J.H. whatever. Yeah. Um, Jeremiah, perhaps. I guess it's your last name that made me think you came from down in the southern Manitoba, maybe from the colonies or something. No. <laughs> He's got a distinctively, distinctively Mennonite last name. Yes. But uh, you're a city boy. And engineers going back as far as you can remember. That's right. So, uh, and it took, I guess, until, um, until my master's to finally realize that, uh, that my real love is, is physics and, and the study of nature. So. Okay, now, interesting question. Do you think there's any better university course if you're interested in physics, like the way the universe works, the secrets of nature? What is the best course to take of any course? I would say um, third year classical mechanics. No, I mean, oh, okay, as a single course. I was thinking of electrical okay, engineering. No, okay, <laughs> classical mechanics yeah. in general, where you learn okay. about... Um, that's not classical the answer. Mechanics. That's not the answer I was thinking of, but that's okay. a good answer. Course I never took course that, uh, that uh, and I, I still don't understand that I know what it's about. It's about the Lagrangian interpretation of dynamics. Right. That's the one that introduced me, I guess, to the most, uh, a really, uh, a concept that, that threads throughout most of, mm -hmm. most of physics, the action concept. This is a... Uh, unifies the whole description of mechanics. This is a fascinating topic, which I, I should tell our viewers about, because if, if I let Richard tell you about it, he's just <laughs> going to start going on about this metric tensor stuff, and, and you won't understand it. But I know you all understand it when I explain it. So, uh, so I'll sort of tell you, I mean, when you say, how does something move, there's basically four ways of understanding it. And Richard's shaking his head, what the heck is he talking about? But the way I count it, there's four ways <laughs> okay. of saying it. Uh, there's uh, your F equals MA picture. Okay. And I'm going to go to the board, and, and uh, Richard will, will continue to join us in this discussion, which is the idea that uh, if you uh, take something and uh, push on it, that uh, how hard you push tells how fast it's picking up speed. So in the first tenth of a second, it picks up a little bit of speed and it goes that far. And then if you still keep pushing on it again in the next tenth of a second, it's got some speed already, so now it's going to have some more speed. So in the next little fraction of a second, it's going to go a little farther. And then as you're still pushing on it, the, the effect of the push is to increase the speed. As long as the speed is increasing, it goes farther with each passing second. So the trajectory of the ball looks like this. 
And when I show a constant push, I'm suggesting really that you would recognize I'm thinking of gravity as the prototype of the force that we'd be talking about. So in this way, we explain the fact that it's falling under gravity by the fact that something is pushing on it, and the harder you push, that it's picking up speed. And you go into the whole calculus aspect of it, but we're not going to talk about that. That's picture one. Picture two is really, in a way, it's an incomplete picture, but it's a picture that, I mean, when you talk about the action principle as being the principle that really showed you the pathway, the thing, maybe I won't say it's showed me the whole pathway. I mean, it showed me a lot of things about physics, and it certainly has got me through all my uh, engineering exams and my physics exams, is tricks of energy. I mean, the idea that energy must be conserved. And the way, the way you use this in calculating what the ball does, is you say when it starts off and it's sitting up here, its energy consists of two forms. The energy it has because it's high up, and because which is called its potential energy, uh, its gravitational potential. It's energy that it has because it's high up and it could fall down. And then there's the energy it has on account of its motion, which we count as your kinetic energy, your one half mv squared. And the trick for figuring out what it's going to do is that as it goes down, at any instant, when it's down here, you want to ask, how fast is it going? And you say, well, if it's going so fast at one meter per second, then it must have a certain amount of kinetic energy, one half mv squared. But where did the energy come from? It only come from the distance that it's fallen. There's a definite fact that the distance it's moved through is the force of gravity multiplied by this distance. Force times distance is energy. So we'd say that the force times distance that it's fallen through has to equal the one half mv squared, which is your basic grade 11 formula for kinetic energy. This is picture two of analyzing how, how things go. Yeah, but you haven't gotten to how, how to get the velocity from it. I mean, the total energy is, is always conserved, the kinetic plus the potential. Mm -hmm. And that's what gives you the velocity, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, well, I thought you were going to go on. I thought you were summarizing that at the end of picture two. Oh, well, I think okay. I am. Okay. Yeah, that, that's picture two. For example, we could, we could do a calculation on it, but I don't think I'm going to do the calculation because okay. I want to look at the total picture. Okay. First, there's your F equals MA, that you push on it and follow inch by inch as the push speeds it up. Then there's this more sort of a global picture that you look at the total thing. Well, if it's going so fast, the energy must have come from somewhere. And you see it come from the fact that it's moved down through a force field, the gravitational field. Those are sort of the two uh, pictures that are maybe the most accessible and the most uh, widely known. But then there's sort of two more sophisticated pictures of the way things work. And the one that you refer to as being the one that opens your eyes and says, this is what I want to be understanding. I want to pursue my studies using this as my, I'm paraphrasing your sort of thing, using this as my, my guideline. I will use this to study the whole secrets of all physics, and it's the action principle. And this is unbelievable. And I'm going to have to take a little board space. Yeah, th th this permeates physics from at, at essentially all levels. It comes from in the very beginning every, every to, to the most physics. advanced. It's level. unbelievable. So. And uh, it's a good way, thing to know. The way it works is you say, uh, <laughs> here's where the ball is going to start, and here's where it's going to end up. And then you say, it's going to take five seconds to get from here to there. Five seconds to get from here to there. Now, I really haven't uh, drawn them very far apart. You know it's not going to take five seconds to get from here to there, is it? But it might take five seconds if you threw it up first. And then it would go up for a while and then come down. So the action principle the most transparent, or the most easiest way I know to explain the action principle is where you specify the conditions of the problem in this bizarre way. Rather than saying, here's where it starts, and here's what you do to it, and then see where it goes. You say, here's where it starts, here's where it ends up five seconds later. What did you do to it in order to get it there? So we we're going to have to uh, say that if it takes five seconds to get it here, well, maybe you've thrown it up in the air or something, but we aren't going to ask what you've done. We're just going to use the action principle 
to figure out what it does. And the action principle is unbelievable. Because just like in the previous picture, we said there was two forms of energy that something has. There's its potential energy, which you count by how high up it is. It's height in the gravitational field, which is the height times the force of gravity, which is a constant, times the mass. And then, that's the potential energy. Well, let's give myself a little bit of, a little bit of space. That's called the potential energy. HGM. We call it MGH all the time, don't we? Okay, so I'm backwards. Okay. And then we got what you call your kinetic energy, which is the energy something has just because it's moving fast, which is the mass times the square of the velocity, one-half mv squared. And if you add them up, you get total energy, potential energy plus kinetic energy equals total energy. Now, what they do in this action principle method, they want you to do something totally idiotic. Instead of adding the potential energy and the kinetic energy, they want you to subtract them. Take away kinetic energy. And all those lousy bastards, they never give you one good excuse why you should do this. And even this guy here who says it's his pathway to knowledge and understanding will never explain why you, they want you to subtract the potential from the kinetic energy. Will you? <coughs> well, don't start now. <laughs> <laughs> well, because it's going to give you the right answer. But, but here it is. They want you to, to take this quantity and... Uh, now, I'm going to have to use calculus now. Well, let me start by phrasing it in calculus terms and then see if I can backtrack and phrase it properly. They want you to take this uh, uh, parameter, which exists as the ball is rising and falling, or to doing whatever it's doing, and you don't know what it's doing. We start by saying we don't know what it's going to do. But we say at any instant, no matter what you think it's doing, if it's moving however which way, it's always got a certain amount of kin kinetic energy. It's always got a certain potential energy. So it's a, it's a quantity that always exists. It always is there. And what you do is, if during this instance of time, this first uh, tenth of a second, it has, uh, it has so much potential, the, the quantity is so much, I've got to say by calculus, and then I'm going to try and backtrack. You multiply it by the time that it's taking, and then you add it up. You add it up over the total time of the trajectory. The quantity in brackets are depends upon the time. Yeah, these these are changing all the time. Yeah, yeah these are changing all the time. Pretty so when I say you multiply it by the time, let's see. I mean, it would be a wonderful accomplishment if we can. Uh, phrase the action principle in a way that's understandable to the people in a 30-minute TV show. Um, and we will think about that problem, but I haven't stated what the principle is. And I'm saying, I'll tell you now what it is, is that the thing starts here, and it ends up here five seconds later. And if we get there any which way, it could go fast and stop, it could go this way and that way and finally come here. It could slowly meander and circle and circle and circle, and none of those are ruled out. But the correct path is very special because if you add up the action quantity, which is called the action, the potential taking away the kinetic, if you add up the total action over the whole five seconds, summing it up second by second, then the true path, which is what the chalk is actually going to do, is distinguished by the fact that the total of the action is less on the true path than on any other stupid path you might have made up. And with that thought in your mind, I think it's time to take a little, little break and go to the musical portion of the show. Uh, we love getting letters from our fans, and uh, we got a real nice letter from uh, one, of our, one of our fans, which we're going to read on the air. Dear Marty, I would just like to let you know that I'm your number one fan. Right on. I always watch a show and tell my friends how great you are, and you sing so excellent. Thank you. I hope you will say that I am your number one fan on TV show because I will be watching you next week. 
and my name is Popeye Parisian. I hope you could sing me a song and dedicate it to your number one fan. <laughs> Well, Popeye, this one's for you. expect me to get the melody and the chorus at the same time. You did beautifully. Well, Papa, thank you, I mean, well, it was done proud. All right, but here's a here's one. Here's one we hope you'll really like. Ira Hayes, Ira Hayes. Call him drunken Ira Hayes. He won't answer anymore. Not the whiskey drinking in. young Indian fellow, you should remember well. From the land of the Pima Indian, a proud noble band, who farmed the Phoenix Valley in Arizona land. For thousands of years, through the ages of time, the water dried his people's crop, till the white men stole their water rights, and the sparkling water stopped. Now Irish people go hungry, their land grows crops of weed. When war came, Ira volunteered. He forgot the white man's dream. Call him drunken Ira Hayes. He won't answer anymore. Not the whiskey drinking engine, nor the marine that went to war. Well, in the Battle of Iwo Jima Hill, there was 250 men. But only 27 lived to march back down again. When the fighting was over, and old glory raised, among the hands that held it high was the Indian, Ira Hayes. Call him drunken Ira Hayes, he won't answer anymore. Not the whiskey drinking Indian, nor the Marine that went to war. Well, Ira returned home a hero. He was celebrated throughout the land. He was wined and speeched and honored. Everybody shook his hand. But he was just a Pima Indian. No water, no hope, no chance. At home, nobody cared what Ira had done. And when did the Indians dance? Call him drunken Ira Hayes. He won't answer anymore. Not the whiskey drinking Indian, nor the Marine that went to war. Well, then Ira started drinking hard. The jail was off in his home. They let him raise the flag and lower it, like you'd throw a dog a bone. He died drunk early one morning, alone in the land he fought to save. Two inches of water in a roadside ditch was a grave for Ira Hayes. Call him drunken Ira Hayes, he won't answer anymore. Not the whiskey drinking engine, nor the marine who went to war. Yeah, call him drunken Ira Hayes. But his land is just as dry, and his ghost is lying thirsty in the ditch where Ira died. Johnny Cash uh, sang that one. I guess I don't know if he wrote it. I think Johnny Cash wrote a lot of those songs, but uh, sounds like Johnny Cash wrote that. Heck of a song, Ballad of Ira Hayes. And. Uh, going out to Popeye Parisian and uh, we're getting near the end of the show and we've been talking some kind of philosophical uh, math things here um, and uh, I think we're gonna head back to the board and uh, see what we can do we have uh, stated the, the action principle, and I don't know if I've really said it in a way that, that you can understand, because 
I use this uh, summation symbol to uh, to indicate a method of calculating something, and I I don't think it, it's really understandable to the viewers without a little bit of an example. So let us show how uh, how it sort of goes. If the ball starts here and ends up here, and it takes, takes any kind of weird trajectory getting from here to there, then how the heck is it going to go? The action which you're supposed to calculate at any, at any time, and it's got five seconds to get from here to there. The action is the potential energy take away the kinetic energy. Now it could do any kind of any kind of goofy thing, but let's just let's just say for example that what if it went straight from here to there in five seconds? Five seconds. And what would be wrong with that? And the thing that'd be wrong with that is uh, your uh, You're going real slow, so your kinetic energy, your kinetic energy is low. But your potential energy is also kind of low. I mean, it's slower than it could have been. And let's say, let's say that the true path of the ball is that it's going to do something like this. Actually, it takes five seconds to get from here to there because you've got to throw it up quite a ways. But the alternative was that it went straight here just like that crawling along slowly and we got to look at this action calculation and say why doesn't it do this? Let's compare how the action calculates in these, in these two situations. Um, and what do we want to do? We want to make, uh, we want to make the difference what, as large as possible, uh, Richard, or as small as possible? I think the sign is, it should be, um you like me to reverse it. Kinetic energy take away potential. Okay, and then that'll be minimum, or it doesn't matter, or the other okay. one will be maximum. This wants to be minimum. Kinetic energy take away potential energy. We want to make this a minimum or a maximum. Okay. See, this is one of the tricks about the thing. You make it something like that, it's either a minimum or a maximum, but it doesn't really matter which one. No, it doesn't it's matter. Just sort of by sign. But uh, we we got to talk this through now. I want us to pick two or three points on each trajectory. Yeah. And let's examine the Ke minus P at those typical points. Okay. The Fantastic. trouble is, in this make-believe path, yeah. how could you come up with a, with a Ke? You don't know what the speed will be. It's oh, a crazy path. Because it's going real slow. What you know is it's going a lot slower than oh, the actual Oh, because it's ball taking does. five seconds. Yeah, okay. it's taking five seconds. So here we say, for this wrong path, for the wrong path, the kinetic energy is low. It's low all the time. And the potential energy is also low because instead of going high up the potential energy stays low so you have low take away low which is a small number small number and let's look at the right path now okay now I'm talking nonsense eh? I think yeah, so it's not going to work out kinetic energy here it's at the time when the potential energy is low the kinetic energy is low. Here I've got the kinetic energy high. Oh no, here, this is going to work out right. Yeah, This is going to work out right. On the, uh, on the actual path, it starts off real fast and then it's going slow up here and then it's going real fast down here. So you've got uh, a lot of Ke, a lot of very KE, little Pe. So it's high so you've got take a positive. away low. So that's a positive number. And here you've got low kinetic energy take away high potential energy this is going to help well you're going to be adding up positives <laughs> and negatives so you, you are increasing the likelihood mm -hmm. that you're going to get a, a small number because you're adding positive and negative numbers here whereas for this path it's not clear that you're ever getting any negative you, here you just don't know what the polarity of the numbers are mm -hmm. i think you have to pull out some mathematical machinery to really do it there's a, w there's a way of doing it where you just sort of look at the trajectories and see that it's a benefit to go up, 
to go up. You spend a lot of kinetic energy getting up here, and then, then you're saving potential energy. But it's, it's crazy because it doesn't make any sense. You're just doing it in order to try and make this calculation come out to be a small number. And you never really know why you're doing it, which is actually what you're seeing on TV. I mean, this is the way it's sort of the deepest underlying principles of physics have to be understood by going to this action principle. But it's such a confusing principle that when you actually try and apply it, uh, you hardly know what you're doing. Well, the people at home will think about it in the course of the week. That's right. And maybe we'll talk about it again That's next week. That's for damn sure they'll think about it in during fact, the course uh, of this week. And we'll see you all next week. You know, I think they're going to cut us off like in seconds. Yeah. So. Okay, well, let's just do a little song to take her home. What do we got? What do we got? P and B. Mm. Like doing this one. Yeah, we got married in a fever. Hotter than a pepper sprout. We've been talking about Jackson ever since the fire ran out. Yeah, I'm going to Jackson. Gonna mess around. Yeah, I'm going to Jackson. Hello, Jackson Town. Well, then she said, well, go ahead and go on down to Jackson. Neil, you're crawling. Go ahead and wreck your hell. Well, going down to town, you've been.